Good evening, everyone. We uh, should be live now, just waiting yes. for the page to load up. Good to see everyone out there again. Um, why don't you open in prayer, Silk? Yes. Thank you, Father, for tonight. We thank you for your word that you've given us, Father. And Lord, uh, we just pray that this word will be in season, Lord God, and that it will touch everyone's heart, Father. Lord, uh, not into just our minds, but into action, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just getting everything set. Hello, Peter, Morel, Chris. How are you? Peter and Kath, I hope you've um, unpacked and moved in okay. So, uh, and it's not too cold. Not today. No. We're going to start by singing uh, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Good to see everyone online and on Zoom. Just make an adjustment here, just bear with me. And tonight, um, I want to, of course, continue again. I really enjoyed um, last week, Couple with Harry, and uh, looking forward to the next one that we'll do in a few weeks' time and just interviewing someone else again. I thought it was really interesting um, with Lynn. I, I just was really surprised with the impact it has in people's lives. It's good to get to know that in this yeah. season. Uh, so tonight I wanted to just share something again from the book, The Hiding Place, and, and just to sort of lay the story out, what I wanted to bring out tonight was that 
Um, Corrie is in prison. She's in Schiefeningen. Say that with a straight face. Schiefeningen. I dare you, Tamsin. Schiefeningen. Um, she's in a prison. Not a fun place to be in. With the family, she's entered in there. She'd gone through the. Um, she'd gone through the things of, of being in prison, being caught, um, having a family. She's in her own cell, and she'd been moved to another cell. But just before I read the part I wanted to read out, I just want to touch on something that happened when they got arrested, when they got caught, the whole family got caught. Um, the chief inspector's eyes fell on the father. They fell on Casper, Corey's father. And the chief inspector said, that on my, because they were caught by prison, they were caught by the police. The, the Gestapo caught him. It wasn't a war thing. It was a private thing. And so they were caught. And the chief inspector said to um said to casper you're too old for prison you're too old um chief interrogator's eyes fell on the father that old man he cried did he have to be arrested you old man willem led father that's the son led casper up to the desk the gestapo chief leaned forward i'd like to send you home old fellow he said i'll take your word that you won't cause any more trouble so Corey's father had a get out, get out of jail card right there in his hand. How old was he? I'm not sure how old he oh, was. Okay. He was old. Right. So this is already yeah quite old because Corey was in a 50s, so her father oh, might have yeah. been quite older then. Maybe something. And so Casper was there, and this is what Casper Kas said. He said, and this is the man that Corey and Betsy and Nolly and Willem all grew up with. This is the man he said, if I go home today, he said evenly and clearly, Tomorrow, I will open my door again to any man who knocks. And of course, the guy. So basically, they said, you can get out, you can go home, get out of jail. But Casper says, if you let me out, I'm going to do exactly the same yeah. thing. Yeah. What a testimony, standing yeah. up for what he believed in. Mm -hmm. um, he believed and he had his line in the sand and he believed in that. And so bear in mind, this mm -hmm. is the kind of father that Corrie grew up with. She idolized her father. And so she's in Schiefeningen and she's there and she says here that um, she'd received a present from her sister and so that brightened her spirits a little bit. And um, she said she heard foot, foot pass, footsteps passing on the coconut matting. I ran to the door, press, pressed my face close to the close, pass through, please, oh please. So I think I've jumped in front. I have jumped in front. She was writing down the 3rd of May. She was she received a present. And there on the floor on the 3rd of May, she received a letter in a cell. She dropped, I dropped the pajamas and sprang forward. Nolly's writing. So her sister wrote her a letter. Why should my hands tremble as I picked it up? The letter had been opened by the censors, held by them too. The postmark was over a week old, but it was a letter, a letter from home. The very first one. Why this sudden fear? I unfolded the paper. Corrie, can you be very brave, she said to herself. No, no, I couldn't be brave. I forced my eyes to read on. And this is the news. I have news. Nolly is writing to her sister. I have news that is very hard to write to you. Father survived his arrest by only 10 days. Mm. So the last thing she saw of her father was him standing there going, no, if you let me loose, I will do that. Anyone who needs help, I will offer help. Yeah. And so she hears that 10 days later, her father had passed away. The letter glittered in the crisscross light as she read the rest. Nolly had no details, not how or where he died, not even where he was buried. Mm. And then his footsteps passing on the matting. I ran to the door, pressed my face to the closed, passed through the gap in the door, said, please, please. The steps stopped. The shelf dropped open. What's the matter? Please, I've had bad news. Oh, please don't go away. <clears throat> Wait a minute. The footsteps retreated and then returned with a jangle of keys and the cell door opened. Here, the young woman handed me a pill with a glass of water. It's a sedative. This letter just came, I explained. It says that my father, it says my father has died. The girl stared at me. Your father? She said in astonished tones. She says, Corrie says, I realized how very old and decrepit I must look to this young person. She stood in the doorway a while, ob obviously embarrassed by my tears. Whatever happens, she said at last, you brought it on yourself by breaking the law. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's what come against Corrie. And then she says this amazing thing. She says, 
Dear Jesus, I whispered as the door slammed and her footsteps died away. How foolish of me to have called for human help when you are here. To think that Father sees you now face to face. To think that he and Mama are gathered together again, walking on those bright streets. Bright streets. How foolish of me to have called for human help when Jesus was right there. Her whole life had been an experience of Jesus being there. And while it can be easy to listen to that story and focus on, um, you know, the provision of God, the comfort of God, the comfort of God. Yeah. Um, it can be easy to focus on that. But I actually wanted to remove a little bit from it and look at the perspective, where we stand. What, what perspectives do we have and, and what perspectives do we see that God does? Do we actually place ourselves in different perspectives? And um, I wanted just to look at some different passages in the Bible about that. And, and so perspective is an amazing thing. And uh, one thing with perspective was, um, you know, you think you've got it. You think you know where it's at. You think you know where you're going. And perspective can sometimes blindside you mm -hmm. because you weren't standing in that place. So I remember one particular, wasn't funny at the time, but probably funny later on. Mm -hmm. uh, the year was 1980-something, my friends. 1980-something. Right. And uh, I was driving a uh, beige TC Cortina. <laughs> Peter, Peter Doc, you'd know one of those. A double headlight TC Cortina, vinyl roof. And... Um, we were uh, heading towards Garden City, and let's just say Seal and I were having a disagreement. No. We were having a disagreement. Really? And so I remember we were stopped at the lights there at um, just off Logan Road, and uh, we were having a bit of a disagreement, and I was getting worked up. I was getting excited for Jesus inside, and uh, no, I was getting worked up. And um, I was looking around, and, and as you do, being a young, young man, revving the pedal on the car and uh, this car was next to me was there and we're moving and I'm looking behind in the mirrors to make sure that we're clear and from all I could see in my perspective I was clear light turns green foot goes flat we're racing through boom, hit through the gears and of course I didn't get too far down the road when the sirens turned on and pulled me over my wife was very gracious because she said nothing to me at the time. Um, but perspective was everything because well, I had a my good time. Yeah, what would you I be <laughs> saying something to you? You had a good time. That was a bit of fun. My perspective was I was clear. I thought I could vent my frustrations out in what I was doing and just drive away. But the police had another perspective. The police perspective <laughs> was there's this funny looking bloke in a TC Cortina. Yeah. He seems to be getting agitated and pulled me over and yes, get a fine. That's what happens when you break the law. You get caught. <laughs> but perspective is everything and perspective in our lives. I guess it's um, perspective, I think, helps shape your faith. Mm, it does. And I think the word of God helps us in our perspective. And that's why the Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, because yeah. it shapes your perspective. What glasses do you see? What, what do you see? I, I think of um, 1 Kings. In 1 Kings with um, Elisha. And so Elisha had, Elijah, I should say, had gone and, um, I think I've jumped. No, no, he'd gone and, I think I have jumped. You're jumping all, all night. I have. <laughs> I am jumping all night. It's a like it's jumped across. I had my spot. I had it well. I well, had isn't it, it well. with the yellow tags? No, no. I had it there. And um, it's after Elijah was with Ahab. And so he's gone out with Ahab and then he goes out through. And so the whole thing, he'd gone through these miraculous things. He defeated the enemies. He brought down the Baal worshippers. He thought he was going well. But at one word <clears throat> from Jezebel, he ran away and he starts to flee. And as he starts to flee, um, he goes through and he, we find out that he's in the cave. And in this cave... He's there and, and as God starts to speak to him in the cave and um, he says to Elisha, he says, uh, when Elisha heard it, he wrapped the, his face in the mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. But as it continues to say here in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 
15. The Lord tells Elijah, Elisha to go and anoint Haziel as king over Syria, anoint Jehu over Israel, and Elisha uh, as the next prophet in your place. Now, Elijah had thought that he was the only one. His perspective was everything was finished, mm. but yet God had a plan. Mm. His perspective was it was done, but God had a plan. And he says, this is what the Lord says to him. Um, he tells him what to do and he says in verse 18, Yet I have reserved 7,000 of Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. That God had reserved people. And so perspective placed one moment, the perspective is that we, um, he was going to be doomed, things weren't working for him, but the next minute his perspective was God. So whose perspective, mm. whose perspective was being revealed? God's perspective, yeah. not not Elisha's perspective. And then when we continue on to 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, now with Elisha. And so Elisha's there, they've got the, in chapter 6 verses 17 to 20, they had the armies that are coming against him and um, he'd gone through, they'd seen Gehazi's greed, the floating axe head, which would have been an amazing thing to see. And so the Syrians are there and they're surrounding him because they're trying to come up with a battle plan. How are we going to get them? And every time they move, their plans are thwarted because mm -hmm. they're saying, and he says, you know, who, um, who is, who's, uh, what's the word? Who's dobbing us in? Who's telling, the, who's telling the, our enemy what's going on? And one of the servants says, none, my Lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. God knows and sees all. And so they go around and they set him and then it ten continues on. They says he said, therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, alas, but my master, what shall we do? We know this story well. We're surrounded by insurmountable odds. How many times have we been caught? And you mm -hmm. say, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Finances are hard. Family's sick. Yeah. Work is this. Work is that. Troubles are hitting us. And we feel like we are surrounded. Mm -hmm. And so yes. our, our real perspective, we put on our glasses and our perspective is, oh, Lord, this is hopeless. What are we supposed to do? Mm -hmm. But yet again, God's perspective is this. And he says, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Mm -hmm. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened mm -hmm. the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. God's mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah. His perspective was full and abundant all around Elisha. Mm -hmm. Not just horses and chariots and uh just checking our thing, seeing what's going on here. Something seems to have stopped. Stop streaming. Did it? I'm no. still on the internet. No. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Just had an IT bungle here. Not sure what's going on. Are you refreshing? Yeah. Uh, I hope this has still come through. Yes, still come through. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think it's still there. Okay. It's not. You have to press um, play. No. Yep. Yeah, I'm just muting that. Still here. Narel says thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So he's his eyes saw the natural things around him, but God's eyes said there were flaming chariots mm. and stuff around. So what did um, what did you have down there? Ah, oh, so I went back to. Um, the beginning of what is the meaning of perspective yeah and so perspective is a particular attitude towards towards or way of regarding something a point of view so that's what it, a particular a point of view a, a point, particular point of view yes yes or an attitude it can be an attitude as well especially when it's whose particular point of view is right yeah um, so, and, and that's in saying that everybody's point of view is different yeah. and it brings me, it reminds me of when, um, in the movies, of course, you see, so you see those, um, pictures of, you know, those paintings and when they put, 
they put um, they put something together like a piece of paper with a painting and they put it together and they open it up and they say what do you see hmm. and so they oh. ask the person right what do you see and everybody's perspective can be um, so most like people that can, can you, you see that, that? What, what do you, do you see? see what first? animal do you see first? Oh, it's a bit blurry, but what animal do you see? It is a bit blurry. Yes. But what, what do you see first? So for me, I saw the, the tiger or the lion first. Can you see that? I saw the lion first. Which I didn't. I and saw he didn't. And Harry saw the monkey first. <laughs> so everyone's person. Narelle says ink blots. <laughs> ink blots. That's what she Beck, saw. a first. cat. Really? Where's the cat? A cat? I don't know where a cat that's is. That's the monkey. Beck, that's the monkey. Yeah. I don't know where it is. That's the monkey. <clears throat> so everyone has got this um, different perspective on on a certain thing, right? Yeah. But um, um, I want to point to that, point out that God's perspective never changes. No. His, his perspective never changes towards us. Yeah. Right? And we see, we, so we need to see what he sees. Yeah. We need to get into the word because this is the constant. The word, the word is the constant. This is how we learn of the Lord. This is how we learn to see through what he sees. And, and he teaches us to love. Like, you know, many times of, in praying, and I've heard Harry pray this, Lord, um, help me to see people like you see people. Yeah. Help me to um, love like you love people. Help me to, um, you know, and anyway, you know what, what I mean. And, and my scripture is um, Hebrews 4.12. And it says, um, for the word of God is living and active. Yeah. Sharper than t any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow and of and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. But the word of God is living and active. Yes, that's he right. He helps us to see his perspective hmm. if we use the word of God. Yep. Yep. It never is, it's unchangeable. <clears throat> he does, <clears throat> and it's encouraging. I was just thinking of also the three times that Jesus raise someone from the dead he may raise more but there's three times that's written about in the bible and so we see these two different perspectives in these three things the first time when we go to um jesus heals the son of the widow of Nain, and a large crowd it says there from the city was with her and then when the lord saw her he had compassion on her and he said do not weep so the widow had lost her only son everyone's crying the the perspective is my son's dead mm. and jesus comes in with a perspective that says do not weep mm. and he shifts the perspective yeah uh, the second time that we read about that it, another one was um i'm going to mark now mark chapter six and um i should put better notes on here so i can find it should highlight the scripture well i should it highlight is. but then i've got highlights so it's this the second one is after the healing oh jarius's daughter yes and so after jesus the woman with the issue of blood touches jesus and i'm scanning my page trying to find this there and um i think i've mucked up my notes just say it rather than read it well i wanted to say what's what was there because jesus sees the the comes to jarius's house well basically he comes to yeah. jarius's house and he says to, everyone says comes up to jarius and said sorry your daughter is dead and so they said don't yeah. trouble the master anymore your daughter is dead. dead and that's the perspective of everyone yeah yet jesus comes along and says no, no. everyone out yeah and he only took the select inside with him and he said no everyone remove and then the third time of course is Lazarus and Lazarus when it comes through and and at the end Jesus says first of all he tells his disciples Lazarus is dead and I'm glad for your sakes that I'm not there uh, so when Jesus came he found him in the tomb 
And so it says in verse 20, so now, so now Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And so she has a shift in a perspective. My brother's dead, but because you're here. So she then sees mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. coming into the situation. And he said, your brother will rise again mm. and shifts the perspective. Uh, the last thing I want to just to look at tonight is a passage in John chapter six, where Jesus feeds the 5,000. And we know the passage well, and a great multitude had followed Jesus. And um, Jesus lifted up, but I see the great multitude where, and Philip, he said to Philip, where may we buy bread so they may eat? But this he said to test him, for he knew what he would do. Philip answered, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. And then this is a great verse here. Then one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loads and two small fish, but what are they among so many? So Andrew comes and he says this, and, and of course we know the story, Jesus feeds the 5,000. But Andrew comes along and shares and he says, this is what we've got. And so when we have God's perspective in things, when we have the perspective of what the Lord is doing, and not only does it bring life, not only does it raise from the dead, not only does it produce, but it takes the little. You only need that mustard seed. Yeah. You only need that small That's portion yep. and it brings it back to life and it grows again. And Andrew was basically saying, you know, this is all I've got. This is all we've got. Is it enough? And you know what God says, says to us today? Mm. What's in your hand? Yeah. What is in your hand today? You might think that all you've got is that tiny little bit of faith. All you've got is that tiny little bit of perspective. Mm. All you have is that small part, but it is enough because God can cause the increase and he can yeah. multiply it and make it grow. That's good. That God pro uh, produces that excess yeah. of things when we have his perspective. When we learn to put on his glasses in things. Mm. Uh, I remember, I'm just going to close on this. I remember that years and years ago, we went to uh, a Reinhard Bonnke um, crusade and... Um, I remember he was sharing the testimony of how he wanted to save souls and to him his battle cry was if there is one more soul in hell then the devil can say he's won and we know he hasn't won so there will be more souls in heaven yeah. and that was his battle cry now his goal and his dream with one little bit of perspective and his perspective was Jesus saves mm. Jesus saves yeah. and he is the same yesterday, today and forever. Yes. And his goal was to do crusades over in Africa and see a million souls get to Christ. Mm. And I remember this when we went to the conference that I picked up this poster, I picked up this poster that I just dropped. And I remember this is the crusade that he had. And so when you can see that, that is a crusade. <laughs> that is a crusade. I don't think it was quite... A million people but this is the people and this was because he had a perspective that God can do anything that Jesus saves that our Father in heaven loves us so much that he would do anything mm -hmm. for us that mm -hmm. he sent his son for us all we need is that little bit of perspective of Jesus yeah. that little bit of faith that says God yeah. can do anything and he can shift our whole paradigm around. He can shift our glasses. He yeah. can shift our situation yeah. when we trust in God and allow the Lord to move on our behalf. Yeah. And when we look at all those passages that we read through tonight and we see in every situation the common denominator is God did it. Yeah. God did it. It's his eyes. It's his perspective. Mm. God did it. Mm. Amen. So I just want to thank everyone tonight for tuning in and uh, look forward to seeing everyone again. Thursday night we have our prayer mm -hmm. and then Sunday we are back in the building and yes. you've got to register. We had a good we time last week. It's a bit different because you've got to register and yeah. it's, it's a bit strange, but um, we're going to get more and more used to it. So uh, praise you, praise you, praise God, praise yes. you. Bless My you. My wife is it. Bless you. Praise God. <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in. Have a great night and see you through the rest of the week. Amen. Amen.